Hey everybody, Mitchell Pearson here. Recently I was asked by a client if I could show them how to create and modify perspectives in the cube. And I thought this was a great question, definitely one worth sharing with everybody. Creating perspectives can add a lot of value to your cube, and they're very easy to do. A matter of fact, you don't even need to be a cube developer to create and deploy perspectives in your cube. All right, so let's get started. A couple considerations here before we jump into perspectives. First of all, perspectives are used to enhance the usability of an analysis services cube. And what I mean by that is it really gives you the ability to not overwhelm your end user, and it allows you to limit, at least on the surface, some of the options that they have when they're building reports and doing analysis. And the reason this is important is because when we start developing analysis services cubes, it can quickly grow quite large in size with all the different dimensions and measures that we continue to add. The last thing we want is to go through this entire process of developing a cube and then at the end our end users refuse to use the cube because it's too confusing or it's too overwhelming or there are just too many options available. So this is where perspectives really play an important role. They are not a security feature. I want to make sure that I point that out. They are not meant for security. They're not going to work as security. Uh, adding or modifying perspectives do not require the cube to be reprocessed. There's a lot of things or little tiny things you can change in a cube that will cause you to have to reprocess that cube, but perspectives are not one of them. Uh, finally, perspectives can be deployed without deploying the entire solution by using a free third-party tool, free tool called Bids Helper. You can download Bids Helper at http colon forward slash forward slash bidshelper.codeplex.com and I have the URL on my screen here. All right, so that is how we can, uh, just a few considerations around perspectives before we get started. All right, so now I wanna go over here to my analysis services cube. So I've opened up an analysis services cube, I've got my solution open, and then I opened up the cube itself right here. So if you're not familiar with analysis services, that's fine. All you need to have available to you is this solution, and you can open up the cube. Within that cube, once we open up the cube, across the top, we're gonna to have a few options available to us. All right, you'll have your cube structure, dimension structure, calculations, so on and so forth. The one that we're going to be worried about or talking about here in this webinar is going to be perspectives. And I've already selected that tab here. All right. So when I select perspectives here, you'll see that I have one perspective currently available to me. And this perspective is called the finance perspective. And we're going to create a new one. We're going to create a new perspective. And I'm going to call this Internet Sales. And the way we do that is by clicking this little button right here over here on the left for new perspective. All right, so I'm gonna click new perspective, create a new perspective. And then when it creates that new perspective, I just wanna give it a name. So I'm gonna call this internet sales. And now comes really the tedious part of creating perspectives. So creating perspectives and deploying them is not a very difficult process, but it is tedious. And what I mean by that is now we have to come through here and select the data that we wanna be displayed in this perspective. So over here on the left, we have all of our different objects that are available in this cube. We have measure groups, we have dimensions, we have KPIs, actions, and calculations. And I'm gonna go through each one of these objects or groups of objects and reduce the available uh, input here, all right? So we'll start with, let's see here, we'll start with measure groups. I'm gonna open that up. And then you can see all the different measure groups in the cube. Now this is internet sales, so I don't want internet orders or customers or sales reasons, so I'm gonna get rid of all of these other measure groups that are available. Now the other thing is we can expand the measure group itself and then only select specific measures within the group. So if I only wanted internet sales and quantity and product cost, then I could exclude these other ones as well. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna get rid of extended amount, tax amount, freight cost, unit cost, standard and then transaction count. So all I have here now is internet sales amount quantity and then product cost. And then I'm gonna close internet sales and close my measure groups and we're done. We're done with that section. Next, I'm gonna open up all of the dimensions that we have available and just minimize all of them. And now you can see all the different dimensions and there's a lot of them. There's a lot of dimensions here available in our cube. And I wanna get rid of almost all of these. So I'm gonna keep date, I'm gonna keep customer for internet sales. I'm going to go ahead and keep geography and then product. The rest of these dimensions I wanna get rid of. So I'm gonna get rid of, let's see, ship date. We'll deselect all of these. I do wanna keep geography. Get rid of employee, promotion, keep product, and then I'll get rid of these other ones here. Sales channel, organization, so on and so forth. 
and then date calculations, account, department. All right. And then once again, we can go into these and select specific attributes within each of these. So if I didn't want to keep the fiscal, if my, my users that are looking at internet sales did not care about the fiscal year, I can get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of weeks. And then I'm also going to get rid of the fiscal weeks. So those are my hierarchies that are available in this dimension. And then here are all of the attributes. And I can go through here and also get rid of additional attributes here if I wanted to. All right. I'm not going to go through all of that, but that is kind of that tedious part of creating perspectives. Finally, I got all my KPIs that are available. I'm going to get rid of all the KPIs. I'm going to deselect all the KPIs to make this a very easy, easy to use perspective. I'm going to go into actions and do the same thing. I'm going to remove all the actions, assuming none of these are uh, going to be related or applicable for internet sales. And now finally, we have all of the calculations in our cube. And this is going to be quite tedious because I need to deselect all of these, which is what I'll do. I'll deselect I'll deselect a lot of them. I'm not going to deselect all of them, but I'll deselect a lot of them. All right. All right. So we'll leave it there. Okay. We'll leave it there. So now we've created this new perspective called internet sales, and we've reduced the amount of attributes and measures that are available for internet sales. And if I go over to analysis services here, and I'm already connected to my AdventureWorks DW2012 cube. And within that cube, I can see any of the cubes or perspectives that are currently available. So you can see if we zoom in that right now I have one cube available and this is that finance perspective that you saw inside of my analysis services solution. So you can see right now I only have one perspective available. If I select that perspective, you can see that the dimensions that are available are reduced greatly as soon as I select that perspective. And that's what we're trying to get here from this, these perspectives is to really not overwhelm our users. So now that we've created our new perspective, we need to deploy it out here to our cube. And we can do that very easily and quickly by simply hitting this button right here, which is offered by the bids helper. All right, so I'm gonna hit deploy SSIS perspectives here by hovering over that button, deploy perspectives using bids helper. Down here at the bottom right of my screen, you'll see that it's progressed and now it is already completed. So very, very easy to do. And now if I come back over to my cube, I can refresh this. And now you see that we have this new perspective here for internet cells. So let's select that. I'll select that internet cells. You can see we only have the three dimensions that I selected. And then we also only have that, oop, looks like I left a couple of the other measure groups here. Let's see here. Yeah, I did measure cells and cell summary. So I missed a couple. Uh, but within internet cells, we can see the measures that we left available in that perspective. All right. So that's how you add perspectives in the cube. Very easy to do, not difficult at all.